All right, folks, welcome to the starting and the beginning of the strings unit. We are now finally entering the more of the intermediate skills in Python, and we're going to be manipulating strings and doing a very deep dive on how they work, how we can use them in our programs to solve more complex problems, which I find more fun. So here we go. So today uh, in this video, I still have to introduce it, talk about um, the nitty gritties of strings. And so we're going to start with what are strings and how does it work in Python? So I want you to recall that string is a data type that is a sequence of characters, it's a collection of numeric, um, alphabetic, and special characters. They're all trapped by either a single or double. So if you start with a double quotation mark, please start and end with a double quotation mark. And if you start with single, I'll end with a single. Basically, what I want you to do is in your program, stay consistent. To be the safest, I would use double. Uh, for the lazy, just like me, use single. Okay. And basically, anytime you see something that is enclosed with uh, quotation marks in Python, you are looking at a string data type. Okay. So, string represents all character symbols in Python. Okay. We use single or double. Okay. A variables can hold string values. There can be empty strings if you just have the quotations mark touching each other. It's empty. There's nothing in between. Okay. You can have a string of just white spaces, and that is not an empty string, okay? So the Boolean value or the truthy value will be true, okay? And strings are comparable. We are able to compare uh, multiple strings by using our comparison operator. So it's in this example here, a pointer, right? If I were to compare hello to hello, it evaluates the ball because the capital H is different than a lowercase h in terms of ASCII value, okay? So, Speaking of ASCII values, we use ASCII values to help us um, compare. So it uses and follows the ASCII order, okay? So numeric symbols are less than uppercase, and uppercase characters are considered less than lowercase. So in this example here, I have Jake and Jane. The first two characters are equal. The only differential starts on the third character of K and N. So K is less than N. Therefore, Jake is less than Jane, okay? 2020. All right, so um, this is how we compare strings, okay? We start from the left, compare one by one. If they're equal, move to the right until we find a non-equal character, okay? That's how we compare strings. Start from the left, start from the very first most character, compare them if they're equal and move on. If they're not equal, determine which one's greater. So. We're going to learn something um, that's going to be amazing throughout your program, which is string indexing. So in Python, we can access the individual item in our sequence if our data type is indexable. So this is something we're going to really examine in the later, um, I guess, later units of our Python course, okay? Where in Python, certain data types, or if you build your own data type, we'll get there, uh, you can make your data type indexable, as in we can go into it. Okay? And this unit around, or this section of the course, we're learning two indexable data types, which are strings and lists. Okay? So since strings are indexable, I can access individual characters in a string one by one if I wanted to. So I have an example string here called hello. Okay? At index of zero, there's H, and one is E, two is L, three is L, four is O, okay? So one thing nice to note is that the last character of a string is always at the index of the length minus one, something very common for Java programmers. But there is also negative indexing in Python, where the very last item is at negative one, and we go all the way up to the negative length of our string. Therefore, the first character is at negative 5, okay? And to index, to grab a single value, okay, we use, we give it the integer index value by using square bracket. So word is hello. If I were to print word at index of 2, we're going to get L because at 0, 1, 2, that's L. And I'm going to show you that in our Python program. So we're going to set that to actually hello world. Let's make it more fun. And we're going to say print. I want words last character. And that's going to give us K. 
character D. Let's add an exclamation mark for more fun. And that gives us the exclamation. Okay, let's say, for example, print what happens if I go out of bound? I'm going to go word of 100, right? We're going to get all these nasty letter. You see index error, right? We're trying to index something that doesn't exist. Doing index out of range. Even if I try to go to the negative 100, that's also going to give us index out of range. So make sure that you are going um, from zero up to, but not including the length of your uh, sequence, or you go from negative one to the negative length of your sequence inclusively. Okay, so for here in our program, uh, if I want to say that I want to access, let's say, the uh, six character in Word, okay, it's W, it's H, is at location zero. Right. When we index and when we count as a uh, computer programmer, you want to start at zero. So we're going to go zero, one, two, three, four, five. The white space between hello and the world still counts as a character in our string. Therefore, it gets an index value. And at location six, we get the character w. Okay. Slicing. If we can index, certain data types are sliceable, as in I want a slice of that string. Rather than just a single value, I want an entire like sections of the string. And this is where it gets really fun. So in Python, certain data types are sliceable, and we're learning two, which are strings and lists. All right. And pretty much when we create a slice, we're creating a little subsection or a little um, subset of the entire sequence. Right. So we have hello. And I'm just going to show you how this works. So print, if I were to do word, right? I'm going to print word at one. That gives me E. So we're starting at E. Okay. I'm going to print also word at three. That's L. This zero, uh, one, zero, one, two, three. The last L is at three. What I want to do is print word starting at one, going up to, but not including index of three. And we use a colon there. Okay, that gives us E and L. It's as in I'm starting here, I'm going one, including two, which is right here, and I'm not gonna include three. I'm gonna go up to it right before it. So it's starting right here. If I were to have a pointer, it's gonna have start right here, include that, include dot that, and the dot's gonna stop there. Right. If I were to say start going from word location one to three, I'm starting at this little midpoint here, going here, then going here, and stopping at three. Okay. All right. Now, if I leave it empty, it means that I'm starting here and looking at it all the way at. So this word, if I were to print word and a slice of empty colon empty, that's going to give me hello. Okay. And what I want you to do is actually read through this and try each one of these steps and really mess around. Okay. But what I wanted to do is put another colon and show you a negative one here. And it's going to do a really cool thing. Basically, our third, um, I guess, parameter when we do a slice is that it tells us how to take our steps. How do I go from one index to the other? So the colon here is telling us analyze a string as an entirety. However, the last argument saying, but um, go in a negative fashion. So I'm actually going from here, I'm going negative one, L, L, E, H, and that's finishing my slicing of colon, colon, negative one. So it's a really nice and little neat way to reverse a string if you ever need it. Okay. All right, and so, Let's say we had inputs to start. It's going to be starting at the beginning, going all the way to four, but not including because we gave it a value. So it's going to go H E L L. So you're going to get hell, you know, just like this class, right? If you had an implicit n value slice, right? We have word. I'm starting at three, going all the way to the end. So we just get L O. So we're starting at three and go one, two, get L and O. All right. And we talked about it here. If I have nothing, you get the entirety. This is going to give us our. Uh, step so we're going backwards if I did negative two I'm going hey I'm going O L H right I'm going negative one add negative two to that so I go negative three add negative two to that so negative five so I get O L H 
for the output of print of that statement. All right. Last thing I'm going to talk about is something called string immutability. This is classic question one on a test. Uh, what makes it string immutable? What does it mean? And here we go. Despite the fact that we can index and slice a string and look at different components, we can't modify it. Okay? We can't say that, oh, um, I have word. I want to say that word at that index of one. I want to set it to, let's say, u. String of u. Okay. And then print the word. What we're going to get is. String object doesn't support item assignment, or we're going to get a whole bunch of errors. Basically, it's because string is immutable, okay? Where we can't alter the data type without recreating it. So if I wanted to put u at index of 1, I would just have to say the entire word of variable is just hello. And that would work, because I recreated the variable and reassigned it with a new value. So this here is illegal. So immutability, where the data type cannot be altered without recreation. And we've learned a lot of them so far. Integers, float, Boolean strings, those are all immutable. If you notice, list are not in this list. Sorry for that. Because list are mutable. They, we can mutate list, and we're going to look at that when we talk about and do a whole deep dive into a list, much like we're doing with strings. And that was it. We talked about all this. We talked about what are strings, how does it work in Python. We learned how to do indexing and slicing, and we learned a new definition called immutability. Thank you for watching and stay classy.